Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking apart the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. The great part is it's not too difficult to take this apart. You will need some tools. I do have this Fantic electric screwdriver set which has a few bits here and the driver itself which is electric. I also have a little metal spatula. It's probably better to have a plastic pick or something to pry things open. I'm going to be using this today. The reason we're going to take this apart is I'm very interested to see what's inside but the more actual reason if you guys notice here on one of the analog sticks we have the rubber coating completely just peeled off and it's just a piece of plastic now. So yeah we're going to be replacing that and in order to replace it you have to take it all apart. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pry from the bottom here just like that I kind of did it with my fingernail and there's just some clips that kind of hold on. You can use a pick or if your nails are strong enough like mine you can pull it out like that. But what you want to do is just kind of massage this piece out. It should pop out quite easy. And if we look at this piece, what's unique is you can actually customize this and repainting. The only emblem you have on there is for the microphone. But other than that, it's just a piece of plastic. You can actually also buy customized ones to replace your original with any color you want. So the next part, what you want to do is take out a couple bolts. And these are going to be normal Phillips, which I'm going to use the PH00. And we're going to use this pretty nifty Nex E1 Fantic electric screwdriver, which will make it much easier and funner to take it apart. I'm just gonna collect all my little bolts here. Good part is it's not too bad, as most of the screws are similar. So once you get those two out, the next part is actually a little tricky because you can't really see what's going on. And if you try to pry this apart, it's going to go, but it's not going to come apart because there are actually a couple more screws under here. And what you got to do is you got to pop off the R1 and the L1 buttons off. The way you do that is you just stick something behind there towards the front side and you kind of just pop them out. So again, you probably want to use a different tool for this than what I'm using, something more angular. But yeah, if you can see that, as long as you get something under there, they just pop right up. And putting them back is as simple as just pushing them in. Go ahead and pull the other one out. And there we go. So yeah, that's pretty simple. And that'll expose a couple more bolts there on the inside that we need to take out. So now that we got the four little screws out, and this whole back panel should just come right off. And usually starting here at the bottom is a good place. And we do have a couple little tabs here that are holding it together. So you might want to release those as you're kind of pulling it apart. But it does come apart pretty easily. Even though it does need a little bit of persuasion, it does pop right out and we can see the back cover here. There's not too much going on. Just a little foam pad that presses against the battery. And what's cool about this thing is you could also customize this by painting it as it's just a piece of plastic. You will cover up the little Sony logo there and also a bunch of mumbo jumbo underneath, but you could paint this if you wanted to, just like this piece here. This is what the controller looks like inside. So it looks quite interesting as we've got quite a few things going on. So the battery is here and this is a lithium ion 3.65 volts, 1560 milliamps, 5.7 watt hours. Yeah, we can go ahead and just pull it out. And also it unplugs from the main board. So if you do need to replace your battery, it's quite easy to get to. You can see that this is a very well-built controller. We have the heptic feedback motors here for the L2 and the R2. Here also we can see the two motors that do the vibrations on both sides. And I do have to say this new remote from the PS5 is an excellent feedback controller. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to disconnect this little micro foam sensor and it is attached to this whole piece here. So let's go ahead and take out this little screw. And again, all the screws have been the same so far. So really easy to keep track. And you guys can see this part just comes right off. So we do have a little ribbon cable that we need to disconnect if you wanted to, or you can just kind of carefully slide this piece out of the microphone here. It kind of sits in there and just kind of leave it dangling around. So either way, but you can unplug it if you want to and put it to the side. So we got that out. And now we can see the chips there a little better with the board, very nicely built. 
and very impressive. So we do have hard soldered connections for these motors on both sides. So they will have to stay together. And in order to take this whole piece out, which we will need to, to get to our joysticks, two more screws. There's one here and one over here. Now we do have to unplug quite a few things. So there's gonna be two ribbon cables on each side here. And these are gonna be for the trigger feedbacks. So let's go ahead and pull those out. And there's like little tabs here that you pull on and just pull out the connector. Be very careful with them as everything is quite small and fragile. You can use like tweezers maybe or something, but not too hard just to do it with your hand. We also do have another one down here that we need to unplug. That kind of goes underneath. That comes out pretty easy. And then the last ribbon cable is right here and that one's a little more tricky as you kind of have to push it out. You can do that either with some kind of tool or maybe your hands, but you just kind of grab each tab on each side there and kind of push it out as it slides out. There we go, so it's out. And that's that connector there. Once you got everything undone, you should be able to lift this main board out. It kind of clicks out. There's some tabs on the sides that hold it. A little bit of wiggling around. There we go. And here you guys can see, we can finally access our joysticks. But let's go ahead and go a little deeper and we'll go ahead and take this whole piece out here. And believe it or not, that's only a couple more screws, which is one here and one over here. It's two silver ones. And these are going to be different. All right, so once these two are out, now this white piece can just pop out. A little trim piece, which also holds down this clear part. And this is where the light flows through to the sides. And now we should be able to pull this whole thing off. And there we go. And here we can see a little better of what it looks like underneath. So we've got our buttons here, the touchpad, another sensor here. Let's see if we flip it around. Okay, so we got these two little buttons here that fall out and everything else kind of holds itself together. But yeah, you could push all this out. And if you were gonna do a mod for let's say these buttons, cause you can actually upgrade these to different styles and whatnot else. You can see they just pop right out. And this is just like a little silicone keeper that has the actual button pushers on it. And the way this works is when you push on this, you guys can kind of see the black part there pokes out and that pushes on a circuit here that we'll look at here in a second. And everything is removable. You just gotta take a few more screws out, but pretty cool and we got the PlayStation button here. So yeah, if you did want it to paint this piece, you could easily pop all the stuff out and paint it, put it back together. So now if we go back to this piece and we flip around here, this is gonna be like the front where the buttons are we can see that this is what they push on. So this is like a little circuit here and it's touch sensitive. So whenever you push your button, it activates. So pretty simple and very well thought through and laid out. So if we go back here to the joysticks, I gotta be careful not to pull too hard on these wires. All you gotta do is just pull on this up and it should slide out. There we go. And as simple as that, this is how you can change these little parts. And here we can see the mechanism for the joystick. If you do have soldering skills, you can replace them. Underneath, we can see how they connect. So, and by the way, this is the USB-C charging port here. Also can be, looks like, desoldered and replaced if need be. So these are original joystick knobs, and we're gonna be replacing them with some aftermarket ones I bought on Amazon. And they have different kinds and different colors and whatnot else. I went ahead and just got normal PS5 black OEM style knobs. And these are not that expensive, so pretty affordable fix. And you guys can see they're not exactly like the OEM. Maybe you can see kind of, but pretty similar. So should work perfectly as it is intended for the PS5. And we also have a rubber coating here that hopefully holds up better than the original. So we're gonna simply just line them up and slide them on. So make sure you seat them down all the way, even after the click, push it down pretty well. And that is it, we got them on. And now we can just go in reverse order and put it all back together. So yeah, as you guys can see, there is quite a bit of things here, but it's actually not too bad. And you can get to everything quite easily. So for next part, let's go ahead and go in reverse order and put it all back together.
So yeah, as you guys can see, it's not very hard to do some of these repairs or customizations on the PS5 controller. And this little handy screwdriver here is quite helpful. It has a high and a low, and also a lock for manual turning, which is great. And obviously a little light here too, to kind of help you see in the dark spots. Nice little case that holds it all together. If you guys want to do any kind of repairs or customizations on your PS5 controller, hopefully this video was helpful. And if you want to get any parts or accessories, I'll have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you guys did enjoy this video, hit that like button and subscribe to see more teardowns. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.